Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. I have come up to East Flat Rock, North Carolina, and I'm joined with uh, Matt Nichols of Mr. Maple. Uh, we're, there's gonna be a second video here with his uh, brother, uh, Tim. Uh, uh, I'm excited to be here. This is a uh, specialty mail order nursery. They have just some, some of the most interesting plants that you guys can find in the mail order business and interesting gardens around that. Um, so Matt, can you tell us something about the history of your... Hey, I greatly appreciate you being here. Uh, I'm Matt Nichols from MrMaple.com. Uh, probably what we're most known for is we do over a thousand different varieties, probably closer to 1,200 now different varieties of Japanese maples and a lot of other cool and interesting plants. Uh, my dad started this nursery more as a hobby and then my brother Tim and I kind of took it and grew it into a little something more. Um, I've been doing this full time since around 08. It's something my dad started doing in the early 70s. We kind of took that hobby and, and just kind of continue to foster it into a little bit more collector oriented stuff. And now we kind of focus on some of the more rare and unusual plants uh, to go with Japanese maples as well as one of the weirdest collections of Japanese maples you'll find for sure. Okay, well continuing with the theme of this uh, new series of videos I'm doing where I've done one with Buddy Lee and I've done one with Denny Werner, uh, Matt's going to show us some of his uh, favorite plants and I laugh about this every time because in the nursery business it's it's like picking your favorite kid right yeah picking your, oh yeah <laughs> yeah right exactly exactly so uh let's get started with that um and we're going to start with this tree that's right behind us but we're going to show you a smaller one first conversations we've been having this morning as we've been riding around that you and Tim are big time uh, hoarders yeah we're hoarders things. okay <laughs> and so somehow that ended up as a 1200 Japanese maple varieties. Or yeah, we're kind of like crazy. That. We grew up hoarding comic books, cards, sneakers, all mm -hmm. kinds of different items. And it kind of played into a little bit of our business model. Uh -huh. um, you know, we kind of became like, we would take dad and say, hey dad, we've got this new and exciting tree. And he'd be like, well guys, that's great. I've got 75 varieties. Right. Do I really need another one? And we kind of found out over time it was us that were kind of nuts about this. Yeah. And so a lot of those Father's Day gifts were a little more selfish. They were keeping them for right. ourselves. Right. And uh, we, we kind of turned that into a little bit more of our business model and that we are a little more niche and that um, we like to present things kind of in a more collector format. So what we do is like every Tuesday at 10, we put 10 new plants on our website oh. and it makes it kind of fun and fresh. So it's something new and exciting. And we do cheat on that. A lot of times there's more like 15 plants going up because right. we need to get stuff on the website. <laughs> but there's always something new and exciting every single week. Right, that's fun. And it kind of keeps it different and it right. keeps it fun for us because right. each week we're planning what's what's new and exciting this week. Right. And we try to curate that to be uh, interesting within that week as well. All right, so tell me about the the tree that's behind us. So Makawa Yatsubusa is one of my favorite Japanese maples. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of like picking your favorite kid, but Makawa actually is one of my very favorite right. types. Right. I would say Makawa and its offspring. There's some cool variations of this as well. Makawa is one of the most classic Japanese maples. People think of it as almost having like a bonsai-esque look, even on its own. It's going to be very right. tightly layered. It's an older cultivar from Japan that uh, J.D. Vertries, who wrote the book on Japanese maples, helped popularize this one in America. Um, Sometimes it's credited as one of his introductions, but it's actually an older one from Japan. And it's got that tight shingle layered look. This right. goes from a light green to just a really exuberant kind of orangey red in the fall. And it's really one of those bulletproof trees. I mean, people say like, what's one of your toughest Japanese maples? And uh, we typically, you know, consider this one working zones five through nine. It's one that's gonna be very, very durable in a sun setting. Right. Um, it's very durable for just really a lot of different conditions, but it really gives something interesting for the gardener and different and unique. Like when you see this, you know you've seen something different than your typical plant right. in a real small compact size, typically. How, how old is this one? This tree's right at 10 years old. Oh, okay, all right. So let's go back out front and talk about the one that we were in front of. Yeah, sure. So back out here where we started, how old is this one? This tree is closer to 40 years old. Um, it's one of the reasons we give times for, for kind of like time frames for how big things yeah. get. Grafted Japanese maples should outlive us all. Like I got to see a 600 year old tree in Japan. Right. Uh -huh. wow. And uh, so they'll outlive us all if they're healthy and happy and, and they can continue to grow. So we always try to give kind of a time frame for how big you should expect one to get right. because they can they can get quite majestic and quite beautiful right. if they're you know, right. older in age for sure. You know what's funny is I would, in, in any kind of retail setting, you know, you tell somebody, you put on a sign, this can reach this height and they go, 
oh my gosh. Right. And I, you, then you have to look at them and kind of go, mm, maybe not for us. <laughs> well, Somebody else I, is going to see it. I, I think plants force people to think about like, wow, how big is this getting 15 years? And they're like shocked. But I think one of the cool things about maples is like you can enjoy them at every size. Right. And some of the oldest plant collections, people get too hung up on like, well, I'll never see that bee. It's full of size. Well, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. They'll never see some of these trees be their, their biggest size because they can outlive us all. Right. And I, like, I think one of the cooler things that some people sometimes is missed is that trees are really, really nice in that 15 to 20 year kind of size range. Right. Some of the oldest collections I've been to, you're kind of walking around like, wow, that's, that's cool. You know, but you don't right. really get to interact with it and be right there right. with it so the, like you do yeah. in that slightly so, so mid aged garden. It's, it's best life is going to be while that person's still there and it can enjoy I think so, yeah. getting it in the ground earlier. To I think it's something you can enjoy at every size. I mean, I think if I think if your end game is like, I'll see this reach its pinnacle of, <laughs> right. you know, on the plane. Well, I don't know that any of us will, right? right. I mean, there's a 600 year old tree in Japan, it's, it's older than America, right? right. Like, yeah, that's right. crazy. Yeah. So, like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's interesting, but a healthy tree should outlive everybody. So another one of our favorites here, this is Acer palmatum Twombly's Red Sentinel. It's a cultivar named by Ken Twombly. Uh, it has a very nice columnar overall habit to it. Yeah. Uh, it's one of our favorite reds. Uh, we're here, you know, early August right now, so we're a little bit into the later summer colors for this tree. It holds a, a red very well. It's one of the more durable reds that we do. Uh, we really like it for its density and its more columnar shape. So this dwarf ginkgo definitely uh, would catch anyone's eye. Yeah, one of our next most popular things we focus on here at Mr. Maple would be the ginkgo trees. We actually do a big collection of ginkgos. The dwarfs are normally among some of the most popular. This is ginkgo by Low Patrol. Um, you know, great durability, great salt tolerance to this. Um, great sun durability for this too. You're going to get that classic bright yellow fall color that you love in a ginkgo, but on a much smaller, denser palette. Uh, so we love this one. I mean, it's one that we can't do enough of, to be honest. Uh, Troll is... Uh, it's, it's pretty durable as well. I mean, it's one that's going to go even into colder zones, so it lets us stretch out what we're shipping to as well. How, how old would you say this one is? This tree's right about 12 years old. Okay, nice. Number four on your list. So, Shishigashira, often referred to as Lion's Head, is a classic Japanese maple. Always very popular for bonsai. It's actually one that's been around since the 1700s. There's a 1700s list in Japan of like early Japanese maple cultivars. Okay. And it's kind of cool. They each have like a little bit of poetry that go with them. Right. So it's kind of cool. And that's where this gets the name Shishikashira. It's actually a female lion. Right. And that's a specific to that, that poem. But very cool. Classic fall color. It's, it's very uh, bulletproof for fall color. I'll say that. And that even in years where the fall color can be a little less, right. it's typically amazingly oranges and yellows all within that color. Right. And just bright, bright. I mean, it lights up even in the years where it's not as exceptional for everything else in the garden. Right. These lion's head varieties, they have that cannabis, the mistaken for cannabis, right, right. But cannabis at times. That might happen from time to time for <laughs> yeah. sure. It's, it's really unique. I, I met a guy who did 50 years worth of just bonsai from this, and they were wow. incredible. I mean, it was, so it's, it's one that's, um, it's got a good following. And people are passionate about this one that like, right. that like lion's head. But it may be a plant that your, you know, uninitiated gardener might come up and be like, I don't think that's a Japanese maple. What is this? Right. But uh, certainly one that's been around the full test of time for Japanese maples. So we were speaking at the 40 years of the J.C. Ralston Arboretum, and which we were super honored to be at. We're right. like, you know, I went to Western Carolina, I majored in political science and history. Right, right. I'm kind of late to the whole horticulture game, but I, I'm really focused on what I know, right? right. And so uh, we were just super honored to be speaking to that. And we got an email, and it didn't seem legit. It was like, hey, would you like to go to Japan? 
<laughs> right. I was like, yeah, and there's a Saudi sheik that wants my credit card information, <laughs> right, right? Like, right, that sounds yeah. too good to be true. Well, it was actually a Japanese TV show, and they were inviting uh -huh. us to come be on wow. Nippo Ni Ikitai. So uh -huh. Tim replied right away, like, yes. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. And they said, send us a video, like, submit your response. And we're like, sure. <laughs> I thought, like, that's, that's never going to happen. Well, they had yeah. us come on the show, and they actually brought us over to Japan for about 18 days. Wow. And we got to talk about Japanese maples and kind of uh -huh. go to some really cool places. And some of the uh -huh. older cultivars... Uh, you're just so interesting from Japan. Right. Um, this is actually one called Acer, Sh Acer Palmatum um, Shiranami. And it's an older Japanese cultivar. It's also off that 1700s list. Right. Again, we're in like August right now, so it's one of the least eventful times for color. Right. It's kind of more in that lime green stage. This tree will leaf out in the early spring like almost a neon pink. And then it kind of gets some peach hints to it, uh. fading to a light yellow, then green. And then uh -huh. the fall color is like really nice peachy orange. So it wow. just goes through some so really different color something. changes. Yeah. And it's always something a little bit different. Uh, I, I really like it. It is one of my favorite trees. It's a little more obscure for sure. Right. It's one that's been around since the 1700s. But sometimes there's cool stuff that's kind of gotten forgotten by the horticulture right. industry. And it's like, you don't really have to reinvent the wheel. Those are cool stuff out there. Right. So well, on your availability you know, on Mr. Maple, you guys have so many varieties. You can't possibly have 150 of each one. You've got... Are they kind of cycling in and cycling out? It does. And that's how it works with some things. Like these typically, to be honest with you, don't stay on the website very long. So when we list something right. like this, it does tend to sell out pretty quickly. Uh, there's, it depends on the availability of sign and production and things like that. Some things we may have a couple thousand of that we're, are like our peak trees, but some trees may be like 10 to 20. You know, some right. things that are more in limited production may be much smaller numbers. Uh, we're always working to keep anything cool and interesting that kind of shocks us right. in stock. So we always want to kind of bring those things back and... And we're really interested in kind of preserving some of those too so they can be out there for people. But. Right. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is a part, like I say, this is part one. Uh, this is one of the Nichols brothers. I'm going to do a, uh, a part two uh, in the next few days. And uh, it's been it's just amazing coming to a, a place like this where you guys really are preserving some of the hist history of these trees and you're so enthusiastic about it. I appreciate it. We're passionate about this. I love sharing this with my brother and we're just honored to have you here. I mean. Honestly, I love your channel. It's super cool. And we're just honored that you would even think to come here. So. Oh, no. No, I, I, this has been on my list for a long time. So thank you guys for watching and uh, following along. And don't forget to subscribe for uh, the uh, part two of this video.